Welcome back, beautiful people. So a lot of us have been going through a lot of changes recently and having to make new decisions in our lives. So I thought I'd do a little throwback and talk about my experience in my undergrad and how I decided to go from undecided to a mechanical engineering major. I thought I'd change it up a little bit and talk about my journey in STEM. It's definitely not the journey I thought it was going to be, but I am so happy where I'm at today. So at the time when I was a senior applying for college, I thought that I was going to be a dance major. At the time, I was so passionate about dance and I, it was life. Dance was literally life for me. So I was like, well, you know what? Since I love it so much, I might as well just make a career out of it. And I was so convinced that this is what I was going to do. After some research and some better understanding of this major, I decided, you know what, maybe a dance major isn't for me, but I still want to do something around dance. So I thought, you know what, my next best thing is probably a business major. I could have my own dance studio. I can do something cool with that. So by the time I had to decide what I was going to major in or apply to be in, I just went with undecided. I literally had no idea. and. There's this stigma about being an undecided major where like, oh, this 17, 18, 19 year old doesn't know what they want to do. Well, yeah, like you're 17, 18, 19 years old. There's so much more experience waiting for you to help you sculpt into whoever and whatever you're going to be. So anyway, I ended up moving and going to college and had an interest in business. I took some business classes. And then I took economics over the summer after my freshman year. I struggled so much in it, like supply and demand, what? So I decided, you know what, business is not for me, but what do I want to do? So I ended up taking my second year to just finish up my requirements and figure out what I want to do with my life. And I met someone. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> And this person was uh, a business major and he was in a calculus class and uh, he needed help. And I had talked about how much I love math because, you know, your girl has the most amazing dating skills and talks about math. And so uh, he asked for help. It was basically some calculus homework that he had to do and I basically ended up just doing it. <laughs> but I was so engaged. It had been about two years since I had been in the math course. So. I got excited with it. Ah, oh, jeez. So I got excited with the math and I was like, you know what? This is this is what I need. I was like, this is what I want to do is solve problems. Literally about three weeks after that, I became an applied mathematics major. So I went from undecided to applied mathematics and I was super excited. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to do math for the rest of my life. I was like excited that I, I felt like I was no longer lost because I felt lost for a while. All these people are already like taking classes in sociology, taking class in this, and I just kind of felt like everybody knew what they wanted to do and then there was me. And so, which I know is not the case. You know, I've talked about this with so many people and I know I'm not alone in that, but at the time it felt that way. So that summer I ended up taking some like linear algebra class and some other mathematics class. That feeling of loss kind of came back I just kind of felt like, you know what, something is missing. So I need, I, I did some research on my career path and then I came across engineering. I had, <laughs> I'm not even embarrassed to say it. I had no idea what engineering was when I started looking into it. And I got intimidated by the major because I looked at the stats. There's not a lot of women in it. There's not a lot of Latinx in it. So I got nervous, <laughs> but something felt right about it. And then I had to choose which emphasis of engineering I want to do. And there's so many. You have, you know, electrical engineers, you have civil engineers, mechanical engineers, aerospace engineers. You have so many other emphasis. And when I was looking through all of this, especially because it was so new to me, I wanted to learn a little bit about everything. And that's why I chose mechanical engineering. I felt like it was the most generalized emphasis because I ended up having classes in each of the emphasis that my school provided. I didn't know if I was going to like it. I had never met an engineer. I didn't have other friends to kind of tell me about their experiences and I didn't, just didn't have anyone to really guide me through that. And so it was literally a leap of faith and I took it. I did it. <laughs> and y'all, it was just, it's been one of the best decisions I have ever made. 
I loved studying mechanical engineering. Just looking back at it, I didn't, I couldn't appreciate it as much at the time. It strengthened and taught me like critical thinking skills and problem solving skills that I can apply at any point in any job, in any, even life decision and dilemma, I apply it. Because with engineer, with mechanical engineering, I felt like it was very step by step. This is what we're going to do to solve and build and design something new. So for example, let's take sticky notes. Somebody had to say one day, I have a problem because I want to stick paper to wherever I wanna go. I want to be very portable. Then you go to the next step, you gotta do some analysis, you gotta do some research. What can we do? How can we make it sticky? From there, you're gonna design whatever your model is. It probably didn't look like this at first. Then from that design, they gotta figure out how to make it, they make it, then from there, they gotta troubleshoot. Maybe they, the first sticky note they made, there's probably a story behind this, and I just didn't do any research on it, but Maybe the first sticky note they stuck to the wall and it, it didn't stick. You know, so then, okay, we gotta troubleshoot that. We gotta fix that. You're gonna go back to the design board, see what failed. You're gonna conduct a failure analysis. You're gonna figure out, okay, you know what? This didn't work, but maybe this will work. You're gonna keep trying and keep trying until you get the results that you want. That's a very high level problem solving thinking that they taught us at school. But <laughs> my point is, Mechanical engineering gave me like a blueprint. I honestly didn't think it gave me at the time, but I can see it now. I understand that my thinking process and the questions I ask when I'm trying to solve problems and that came not only from my personality, but it was strengthened through my education. Not everyone needs to go to four or five plus years of education to have the same result, but this was just my experience. I am beyond happy with it. I struggled. I didn't sleep at times. Even even with my failures, like I learned to apply the whole troubleshooting and failure analysis perspective versus versus saying, oh my goodness, like I, I made another mistake, like ugh. No, it's like okay, I made a mistake, how can we improve? How can I use this experience to figure out what didn't work to then find what did work? I do wanna add that <laughs> I actually didn't end up in a mechanical engineering position after college and I don't plan on it anytime soon. And for a whole other reason and story that I can tell another day. But I can tell you that I'm really happy, even though the plan that I had envisioned didn't come out anything like I had thought it was going to be. It's learning from the process. It's like flowing with change, right? I thought I was going to be a dance major. <laughs> and I wanted to go to like Juilliard or something. And here I am with a BS in mechanical engineering not even in a mechanical engineering position. Um, still in STEM, definitely STEM. STEM will forever be my home, I think. Part of telling this story is not just to inspire people to come to engineering. No, it's, it's being okay with change, being okay with plans not going as planned. Right now we're living in a world that nobody could have imagined, I think, and uh, change is always going to be inevitable even after all this chaos passes by change is inevitable it's going to happen and it's our responsibility to figure out how we respond to it how we react to it the lessons that we learn from it and how we're going to move forward change is hard change could be so hard but it's possible it's doable and it's going to be okay so whether you're right now trying to choose whether to be a dance major or not or trying to choose which emphasis in engineering you want to be just try it just do it just take that leap of faith even if everything doesn't make sense and don't wait for everything to make sense you know don't wait for everything to feel perfect or wait for the right moment there's not always going to be a right moment to do something take that leap of faith be okay with the uncomfortableness that comes with change no matter the outcome you make the best of the situation you rise on top no matter the external circumstances you get to thrive because you want to thrive so i hope you enjoyed my little story time there's different ideas i have for this channel that will be coming up and if you want to hear more about my experience in stem where i'm at now where i'm going or where i plan on going we'll see if it happens drop a comment down below hit that notification button and be sure to subscribe 
Stay resilient because you've got this and I hope you stay safe. See you in the next one.